Here's a couple more things that I also brought along. Here's that pumpkin powder that I told you I add. And if I wanted to, I'd make I could make pumpkin cake or pumpkin pie. I could make anything with this powder. And what I do is um, these are pumpkin from pumpkins that I raised in the garden. And I cook them up and then puree it and put it through my food dehydrator and it makes powder. It's it's really nice, you know, you can add a couple scoopfuls to add flavoring or I can't remember. Let's see. Quarter cup of powder to a cup of water. So I could use a half a cup of this and end up making a pumpkin pie. This is hot pepper jelly, jalapeno jelly that I made. I had a huge um, what do I want to say? Pepper crop. So this stuff is great. Pour it over cream cheese and then serve it as an appetizer with crackers. Um, I keep wanting to bring it out. I, hopefully we'll have a campfire tonight and I can share that with this with others. And this, I made a lot of this at home. That's tomato powder. And same thing, I cook my tomatoes. Then I puree them, and then I dehydrate them. And what's so nice about tomato powder is you can take, let's say, a half a cup of boiling water, a um, couple tablespoons of uh, tomato powder, and then add whatever seasonings you want to use. If I wanted to make pizza sauce, I would add whatever oregano, whatever seasoning I want, and I'd have homemade uh, pizza sauce in, in just a matter of minutes. Um, I've got a lot of different dehydrated foods at home. I've got dried potatoes, same thing. You just rehydrate them. And I've made pizzas and Italian food at home by using my dehydrated vegetables and rehydrating them. And I have a pizza right there. I don't have to, um, you know, go buy the tomato sauce or, or whatever. Also, in my under the bed is where I keep uh, the pint jars, and I've got canned beef, hamburger, chicken, and beans, and there's are you know the dry beans. I've also got several pints of my homegrown carrots, and they are delicious. So I I packed a lot of food to get us through three months on the road. And it's going to last us. We may end up having some left over. I've also got a spaghetti squash. A pretty good sized bag of sweet potatoes. And two... What are those called? Those squash. Those sweet squash. Acorn squash, I think. I've got those up in my other pantry. That um, I plan to use and cook up some meals. So, that'll give you an idea of how I cook from scratch while on the road. And, in the time it made me to make this video, dinner's ready. Talk to you later. Well, I was going to get in the pantry and I decided it'd just be easier to drag it out. Um, we've had quite a bit of chicken soup. This is, actually this is turkey soup. But, same thing. All homemade um, after you know we've after the holidays I always take the leftover turkey and then make turkey soup chicken soup whatever and you know I used to raise my own chicken so most of it was uh, uh, my own raised home raised chickens that I made chicken noodle soup out of I just found out this is my last jar I thought I had two or three jars left Got a bunch at home, just didn't bring it all. I also make ham and beans. And we all know how long it can take to to make ham and beans. You gotta let them simmer on the stove all day. Open up a jar, and I've got ham and beans. And I do these the same way as I do my dried beans. I put in the dry beans, put in my vegetables. I've got carrots, onions, celery, um, I'm sure garlic. I also add some of the ham juice to give it flavor. And then big chunks of ham from our leftover hams. 
and I process that and when it's ready to when we want ham and beans I just open it up and heat it up and I've got it these are potatoes from my garden um, they're already cooked if you want mashed potatoes throw them in a pan heat them up mash them or slice them up for four hash browns and these are my home can tomatoes same thing I use those to make just a variety of things homemade uh, spaghetti sauce um, salsa poured in chilies vegetable soup whatever and the last thing that I have here is I grind my I grind all of my own flowers so I use our homegrown wheat for my wheat flour and I do have flour and sugar up in there and then I also um, I ground up some corn before we came so if we wanted cornmeal and I like this a whole lot better than the stuff you buy in the store well guys I'll show you a little bit of what I brought along um, yeah we bought some fruit cups because all my canned fruits gone um, looking in the back there oh I've got a half gallon jar of pancake mix that you just add water to and this is a different pancake mix that I brought along I, I like it better but um, what I've been doing with my pancake mix is adding pumpkin powder to it and then I make pumpkin pancakes and it's really good and with maple syrup um, let me see what else I can find okay so once I get the onions in I pack my meat in really tight in the jars so I can get a good amount of meat. And I'm going to say this is probably, well, I know it's about a pound of hamburger in a pint jar. You get a pound per pint. So um, I used to can it in quart jars, but that was almost too much hamburger. My beans, this time I did black beans. I guess you can't tell that they're beans, but... Um, I, those are so easy. To tell you the truth, meat and, and dried beans are just about the easiest there are to can. They've got to be pressure canned, but um, I have now learned to prefer pressure canning over water bath canning. But I put my beans dry in the jar. I don't pre-soak them. Put them in dry. And then I put uh, the water in there. And if you want to put some salt in, you can. I don't always. And um, you process them. Can't remember. I think it's 75 minutes for a pint and 90 minutes for a quart, according to whatever yours is. Uh, um, I'm not sure if we're going to have a garden this year. I, I want to do some more traveling. But if I do, I'll show you how I do some of my canning. So... All I'm doing is just going to cook this long enough, heat it up long enough so that the onions become a little bit translucent. That's just to release more flavor. We like onions and garlic. Um, quite a bit of garlic in my this batch of salsa. I've actually stopped um, canning salsa. I found it's just so much easier to use um, do canned tomatoes. And I did bring a lot of uh, canned tomatoes with me, and I've done a lot of cooking with that. Uh, this here, I brought, I make homemade tomato soup. I finally found the recipe that is amazing. It is delicious. So I, um, it's a little bit of work, but it's so well worth it. I brought, um, several quarts of tomato soup and tomato basil soup. Um, then I will, I'll just splatter, did I get you in the face? I pour in my quart of salsa and like I said it's already got peppers and onions and garlic in it. I use a little bit of fresh um, onion just because it gives it a little more flavor. And the beans, I may have to put this down. But then I just dump the beans in. And you know what, guys? Yeah, I'm going to have to put this down to get them all out. Oh, no, that did it. 
But guess what, guys? In about five minutes, I'm going to have chili that tastes like it's been on the stove simmering all day. This is one of the things that I love about canning my food. It's all done. It is a lot of work, um, but you get to preserve the food that you've grown, and then you just grab it off the shelf and heat it up, and you've got a meal. Um, I've showed you the tomato soup. Another thing that I do is I make my own cake mixes and my own brownie. Uh, well, just about any of that stuff. And so this is brownie mix. And for a, let's see, nine by nine pan, I just use two cups of my mix, a half a cup of melted butter, two eggs, and some vanilla. And then I, I've baked it in my oven here. I also have made cakes from my own homemade cake mix recipes. Um, let's see what I've got in the freezer. Don't think I have a whole lot. Um, I don't, I love fresh garden peas, but I don't grow them. They're, you pick and pick and pick and pick, and, and then you pick and pick and pick and pick some more, and then you pick and pick and pick some more, and you get a cup of peas, so. But I've got, um, I made up a bunch of stuffed bell peppers, and they're in the freezer. I, we've already eaten these twice, so these are the last two. And I also make homemade noodles, um, and I've got those up in my freezer. And like I said, I haven't been able to make our bread, so have to do with that. Now well, let me go see what's in the pantry. And yes, I call this cooking from scratch because I made the food and canned it up. But I had a pint jar of hamburger that I had canned. When I can my hamburger at home, uh, my favorite way to do it is um, I cook it first and then get all the fat off of it. And anytime you cook meat, this is kind of a turn off to some people, but anytime you cook meat, it, um, you're going to get like a little ring of fat around the edge of the jar. And it's just, it's not in the meat, it's just around the edge of the jar, and I'm able to pick that all out. Um, I just chopped up an onion. This is, I brought some of my onions that I'd grown, and there's some garlic, so I've got that hanging there. Um, I'm gonna put the onions, chopped up onions, in here. The flopped salsa, I'll call it, has onions and peppers and, and uh, jalapenos. It has all the stuff in it and tomatoes. Whoops, I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed, and I didn't bring a tripod. My tripod's easy. Hi, guys. Today is uh, Friday, February 23rd, and we are currently at uh, Craggy Wash Campground near Lake Havasu. Um, it's well, I'd show you, but of course now the sun peaked out. I don't know what you can see. But it's been cold and windy. I think it's like in the 50s out there. Maybe probably the upper 50s. And yesterday we went to town. We got here a couple days ago. We went to town and just did the usual stuff. We went to Lake Havasu, um, London Bridge. Just checked things out. But what I really want to do is climb these mountains around here. Um, if I get to do it, I'll take you out there. But the really cool part is there's a lot of the longhorn uh, sheep in this area. And we've seen them. And just about everybody here has seen them. They stay up pretty high. Um, there's quite a group of people here, and that's fun. But I was trying to decide what could I show you, and I thought, I'm going to show you how I cook from scratch while on the road. Um, most of you that have followed me know that we raise and grow almost all of our food 
Um, since we've been on the road, I haven't been making my own our own bread, and we usually drink raw milk, but um, each state's different, so I don't know where you can get it. In the state of Kansas, you have to know someone, and they can't sell it off of their farm, but if you go on their farm, you can buy it. So it's been a while since we've had that. I see my pantry doors open back there, but I'm going to show you some of the stuff. Um, what food that we do grow and raise, I freeze some of it, but the biggest part of it, I can, and I can it all myself, uh, so I know what's in it. Today, I'm going to make chili, and I, like I said, I can my own meat, so from the hamburger, the hamburger that I'm using is from a grass-fed steer that we raised, and I canned the hamburger. And then a couple years ago, I made some homemade salsa that kind of flopped, but it's really, really good in chili. So I'll be using that. And then I buy dry beans in bulk. And from that, then I can the beans. So it's a black bean chili that I'm making today. And I'll go ahead and show you some of the other stuff that I have canned up. I've got a couple items in the freezer, but I just don't care for the freezer food. Um, it just tastes like it's been in the freezer, whereas the can home canned food tastes um, almost fresh. And I can also uh, control how much salt and sugar I put into things and no preservatives per se. So it's um, pretty healthy in my opinion, closest I can get to buying fresh in the winter. We are in California, and there's a lot of fresh produce out here. Um, and I have bought some along the way. Well, I guess we're in Arizona now, but um, anyway, I'm going to show you what I do to cook from scratch on the road. 